Gundam with your Mercury fans, what it is. It's your main man, Master Cell, leader of the Master Master of the Roundtable Company. Want to subscribe to that spin loop. And this episode, damn. Now, not that predicting Gundam with your Mercury is ever possible. However, this episode didn't really go down how I thought it would. There is actually slick one prediction I did have. I guess it's one of those predictions where I made a whole bunch of predictions and only one of them had to be right, right? So never mind. But the fact that we pretty much actually were able to handle it this episode. Yeah. Well, presumably, because you know there's more problems than Prospera. However, when it came to the whole thing, we pretty much get right into the episode, immediately following it up with the match between Selecta and Eric. Eric. Ariel. The main one. The firstborn. Or the only one, because everybody else is cloned. Y'all know what I'm saying. And when it comes to the whole thing with that, basically, so that's just having problems in the Gundam, because you know she's breathing heavily throughout the entire episode. And honestly, it's one of those things you gotta just keep it to keep in mind that, of course, Aerie doesn't actually want to hurt Selecta, let alone kill her. Because that had to be real. Throughout that whole thing, I kind of just got the notion where Aerie could have won that at any time. However, really, Selecta was just supposed to keep Aerie busy. The main squad for this episode didn't even involve Selecta, let alone Ghoul. Now, here's the thing with Ghoul. Well, not even Ghoul, here's the thing with Londa. Now, I didn't give Londa no benefit of doubt at all last episode, so I guess I'll do it here. I can at least say that Londa has indeed straight up been ignored, and when it comes to him learning about his father's death and not learning, learning from Ghoul himself, stuff like that, I mean, that is kind of a blow. It does something to a person. Like, honestly, the first thing that came to mind was, well, Yu Yu Hakusho's brother, never mind. Yu Yu Hakusho is 30 years old, yes, but it's one of the greatest, so I'm not going to spoil it. Go watch Yu Yu Hakusho if you haven't. But basically, you know, you can't ignore Londa's feelings, even if they're misguided as all hell. What I'm trying to say is, he's not wrong for feeling some type of way. It's just the way that he feels is freaking stupid. Like, why are you blaming me every night? This is like the whole thing with, you know... <sighs> Remember Shadik he, he was going after Ghoul because he thought Ghoul basically tainted me or me and First of all, this is just freaking stupid, stupid way to look at it. It was kind of just the flip side to it. And you know the messed up thing about all this? I was thinking this during Shadi. I didn't want to put it out there, but I'm thinking the same way during this thing right here. And it's like this. If you want to blame somebody from changing somebody that you love, that's not the route in the first place. But even then, you got to blame it the wrong person. Guys, the reason why Biamine, the reason why Ghoul, as well as many other characters in this show have changed, is Saleta. And let's be real, what a freaking better. Now I'm not going to put it completely on Saleta, because of course Ghoul had to go through trial after trial, pain after pain, turmoil after turmoil to get to where he's at now. Mind you, he was an Earth Captain once. But, yeah, you, you're directing your anger at the wrong person, I just was making this kind of, bruh. Sympathizing with you becomes that much harder when you're doing it the wrong way, aiming at the wrong direction for the wrong reasons. And of course, Ghoul can't actually take out his brother. So, in that last exchange, Ghoul was gonna let Londa take him out and presumably kill him. However, Phyllis, who's been on, you know, both sides, but well, not even both sides, just team Ghoul's out, your tech, basically came in at the end and made sure Ghoul didn't die. Which, I forgot, I forgot how they used to call this. I think it was like back in the day when somebody did something that kind of just stop the fighting that was going on for no necessary reason. I was kind of hurting the whole fan base. I think they called it out like the good boy or the whatever of the show. I think Fellas just got that W. I'm not going to call you best girl because who the fuck is best girl on the show? Best girl can't be the main character so that's whatever. Best girl is not me or anything. Shoo Shoo, duh. What the fuck? Why didn't y'all give Shoo Shoo the gun? <laughs> that, 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 that just a nitpick for me. That, that, that has nothing to do with anything. It's just that. When you gave it a bell, I mean, doesn't even really do anything with what she tried to, but you know, she's a terrible shot. It's kind of like I was saying in my heavy illusion videos. Just because you, you think you can shoot doesn't mean you're a shooter. People try to put that with, you know, a shooter is somebody who's able to kill. A shooter is somebody who can make the t hit the target. Bell is not that. She gave it to Shushu. She gave it to Shushu. However, the person who is a shooter, apparently, Elaine. Oh, at this point, we gotta be real specific now since there's a third one. Elaine, too. I haven't given this man no light, but he shot Prospero. He got the head shot. You can't. I, I I I can't put nothing on that. Like, bro, you did you, you 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 did that one though. Of course, you know he he shot her in the head and the helmet. I don't know if that was intentional, but of course, when a blow like that, she's not gonna kill Prospero, especially that thing she's been wearing this whole time. 
And she had it on for a reason, not just for head protection. There was something on her head that started glowing. I'm going to let next week explain that. At the same time, pretty much saving me Rene also. So, yeah, okay. Elaine 2. First episode, you got one. The second episode before the end, but you know, somebody has to do something eventually in life, right? Then the whole thing, you know, with <laughs> me Rene, you know, she's shouting at Prospera, talking about love her kids equally and stuff like that. She ain't wrong. Just, you know, situational. I will at least say, when you're in a situation like Prospera, it's kind of hard to be like, hmm. It's something you really don't want to dive into. It's just that the way Prospera has conducted herself, it's kind of like Elaine, you know, the way she conducted herself throughout the entirety of this series so far. Bruh. Who even going to take the time out to try to... <laughs> like, this is going to be a big moment next week where we're going to have to try to sympathize with Prospera and try to think about why she's doing what she was doing from her perspective. And I'm just not... I, it, it, it's going to take me a week to just prepare myself to try to care. Can't be a bitch for a whole series and think... About, you know, that message Mia Rene put. Of course, you know, she thought about Saletto, how she said she was always, like, you know, her message to Mia Rene, she would always be attached to her. So she had to think of something that she, Saletto would say to her mother, which would not have been hard. And even if it was, you didn't think about that like that. Like, <laughs> Mia Rene has been hearing it the entire series. Saletto loves her mother. Saletto loves her mother. Hey, Mia Rene, do you know Saletto loves her mother? <laughs> I shouldn't even laugh. <laughs> And was there something that Mio Rene said right there? Mio said that she loves her too? That's Saletta's mother, you freak. Mio mentally said that she loves Saletta? Mm-hmm. 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 Actually, let's keep it a buck fifty. All right, next week's the last episode. If there's not a wedding next week, I'm going to be so mad. Like, <laughs> I did not get this far. I did not go through all this. Excuse me, guys. We did not go through all this not to get that wedding. Who even made damn sure in the most weird fashion Silly fashion, stupid fashion. Yeah, that fencing next week. I'm not gonna let that. I'm not gonna let that live. I get it, but it was just freaking dumb when I saw it. The give so got the back the holder. Just a, at the time, it looking like a small detail. Even though yes, Selecta needs to be the holder to deal with me Rene. However, it was put in place for the great finale. Ghoul wants that wedding as much as we do, and this man confessed his own feelings in Selecta. Like, take that into consideration. The guy who was slated to marry Mio, who's in love with Selecta. Went out of his way to make sure them two can marry each other. Gundam, don't you fuck this up. Now, there is that other group. I think it was like Land Range 1. I don't know if that's for actual the assembly. Blah, blah, blah. The folks that was originally with Elaine, well, not even originally, right? You know, Elaine 1, the guy we all know and love. Elaine 2, the prick that we hate. And now there's a third Elaine, just in case, because they tr tried to kill Elaine 2 in the process of killing everybody else. They going back on that sense that there should be no Gundams in the world, which they only do with convenience. Because, you know, Delhi Rambram is back. However, he was just used as a key to try to negotiate with these guys, which wasn't that a bad idea, it's just that... Where in Gundam does negotiations work? In Gundam, you had to come to an understanding after somebody fucks up, and then you have to have a conversation about it. I do duels, I do rules, or... We are really running after you in the hallway. Two sides actually coming together that just, just don't happen here. So they was gonna kill all the Gundams. Most of us is in Gundams. Most of us is in, like... He don't, that, that's the, see, Quiet Zero was already shut down. Like, the freaking data storm got shut down. So, all that was actually just handled. It was done. So, these guys coming in out of nowhere just for their own agenda. And that's the problem here. These guys had nothing to do with anything. They just took the first L, and now they salty. They'll kill everybody. Fuck everybody. I got this didn't even happen, right? This is with Airy, Ariel, defends everybody. All those Gundams come in to kill everybody, they do this big ass laser, big ass blast, and Ari does what she does to protect everybody, even though Prospera told her not to. And for the first time Prospera screamed in this whole show, she screamed out Ari, because Soleta looked around and seen Ariel just bang the fuck up. Not absolutely destroyed, but damn, like tore into pieces, like just floating debris. Now as I can share how that's going, so I'm not going to really say anything to kind of be like, you know, predict predict next week like that but in a situation like this where you have Gundam not even Gundam just mech shows and whatnot not everybody can make it and when you have a situation where you're not going to kill off anybody in the actual main cast since Gundam is proved but that's not about to happen which thank god we did pray for that the person that you take out was a person technically never even there if that makes sense you killed the person that was trying to exist the fuck 
But you know, we're not 100% even sure that Aerie's even dead. We just know that Aerie was banged up right now. So we're going to go back to that next week. Then again, we're in a position now where Aerie can't, technically can't exist. And that was the whole point of the Next week, the final episode, which is simply called the final episode. We're going to see how things go down. We're going to see how things work out. And we're going to see how we're going to end this whole show. Get the fucking wedding. Dude, everything's got to say. Everything. Matter of fact, when is that his meal's birthday? Get married on her birthday. Y'all watch this video, leave me a comment, let me know what you think. Like this video for me, and I'll see y'all. Peace out. Subscribe to this video. I've seen people talking about that parallel between some, uh, Mary Renee trying to give Prospero a hand, like they've been doing throughout the whole show. She's not invited to the wedding, y'all know that, right?